Greetings, I'm Shad, and I'm going to share with you some of my favourite swords. Now, for me, because I, I, I love swords, I love, I love swords, I love them all. Alright, that's sounding creepy. What I'm trying to say is that there is not one particular sword that I would always use no matter what circumstances I'm in. Context would always have a role to play, and depending on the things that I needed to do, would depend on the fav my favourite sword for that situation. So I'm going to share with you the three main kind of situations that uh, could have existed, uh, and so one that doesn't even wouldn't really exist, but it's a fun one because of fiction. And I'll share with you my favourite sword for each one of those categories because, in all honesty, sometimes in those situations I wouldn't even pick a sword. But out of all the weapons, the sword is my favourite. So therefore, if I had to pick a sword, what would I pick? The three situations are one. Self-defense in a medieval-ish context. So, if I was in a medieval period or I was in a medieval fantasy world, for the, we the sword, not the weapon, the sword I'd pick for self-defense, the sword I would pick for adventuring, if I was an adventurer, the classic kind of fantasy, I think, of searching for treasure, hunting out monsters or whatnot. And lastly, the sword I would pick if I was going to war, uh, entering a large battle. And for context, I'll also just mention my favoured weapon for those contexts. So, beginning with self-defence. As I really think about it, I would probably pick a broadish bladed backsword. Now, what do I mean by broadish? Well, uh, the width of the blade would be probably a little bit wider uh, to allow for a more acute edge angle. Um, uh, and so that's what I mean about that. But why the back sword? Well, in an objective sense, I and you've probably might seen my video, it's available there, single versus double-edged swords, I do feel that a single-edged sword has greater opportunity to get more advantages if you have, kind of, you have the boxes that you wanted to tick to make a good sword. I feel single-edged swords have more opportunity to, uh, in a rounded sense, to end up being superior to what a double-edged sword ever could try and come close to. Well, it probably could come close, but I reckon, yeah, single-edged sword always comes out on top. Please watch my video if you're wondering what I'm talking about. I would want full hand protection, okay? And I would want, you know, it to be light in the wrist and also to be kind of a, a dueling type of sword. Because in self-defense, that's what you would more predominantly fall into. One-on-one -on -one fights, unless you're waylaid by bandits and then you're kind of screwed. Unless you're a hero. Depending on how paranoid I would be, would depend on what type of secondary weapon I would use, whether that would be a dagger, gauntlet, buckler, or even shield. But you wouldn't really carry out a shield because it'd be encumbersome. So if I had to choose between dagger, buckler, or gauntlet, Gee, I haven't done enough personal practice, I don't have enough personal practice with each individual one, individual one to find a favoured option. I've, you know, fiddled with them in my own personal training. Uh, for now, I would probably say dagger or buckler, don't have a definitive, you know, option. Now, would I pick a different weapon if I could pick um, uh, just any weapon instead of being restricted to swords? Well, for self-defence, no, nah. I would always still pick a sword no matter what. In a medieval or fantasy context, Swords are the best weapon for self-defense out of any weapon you could pick in that period. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't pick a rapier for my favorite sword for self-defense, because the rapier is like the dueling weapon. It is the weapon used when one-on-one, -on -one. and that's kind of the point. If I knew I was only going to be fighting one person at a time, I would pick a rapier. The rapier has so many advantages for the one-on-one -on -one duel. That is what it is for. But as soon as you add an additional opponent where you want to need to do you know, big sweeping kind of, you know, attacks and also stopping power, if you want to just do one hit and make sure that person drops right away, that the rapier, it falls short in those regards. And so I would want the option available to me with the sword that I'm using to be able to drop someone in one blow if I needed to, and also to be able to do some big wide swings against two, three people if I would ever be waylaid by so many people at once. I would still be dead, okay? <laughs> I mean, the only hope you would have with fighting multiple of people, multiple people is a lot of luck. You'd have to be, the skill level would be, have to be so amazingly different, but if they are even mildly, you know, uh, competent with a weapon and there's more than one against you, 
in real life, yeah, you're screwed. And so your best chance in that circumstance would be to try and hold them off at bay or whatever until more help comes and they run away or something like that. Okay, adventuring. Now, adventuring is different to self-defense uh, because you are actively looking for trouble. Uh, you know, self-defense, you are just being armed for the unlikely chance in which you might need to defend yourself. Whereas in adventuring, you are actively looking for danger or trouble, or you are doing things that could very likely end up in danger or trouble. And that changes the circumstances quite a bit. Uh, for one, I would definitely carry a shield if I was an adventurer. I'm not sure I would wear full heavy armor, but I'd want to have a really significant level of defense in case I ran into trouble. So because you're doing a lot of walking around with adventuring, you, uh, I wouldn't want to wear full plate armor or anything like that. Something comfortable, gambeson, something like that, and I would definitely have a shield with me. Next, my offhand weapon. Well, it might it would be a bit different for self-defense because in self-defense you could rightly assume you're fighting People. In adventuring, this is in a more fantasy kind of context, so therefore, you're not fighting people. That would mean to me, you would want something that could do a bit more damage. You'd want something to have, you know, your sword to have a bit more stopping power. So my pick would be a falchion or messer in that circumstance. Again, sticking with single edge for the same reasons as I mentioned before and in the video that I suggested you go watch if you feel inclined. Also, hand protection probably wouldn't be nearly as important, especially if I'm carrying a shield. So that's a bit, you know, of a maybe, but I have looked at that comparison between, you know, having a, a sweat tilt versus a cross guard, even if you're using a shield. I've, I asked the question in this video, and, I, you know, I come to the conclusion, and, you know, you, you guys, my viewers, help me come to this conclusion, is that I would still want a sweat tilt. Speed would be less of a significant factor because I have I would have my shield for defense, so I wouldn't need to be ready to parry at a moment's notice with my weapon. So I'd probably have that the blade be a bit more beasty and heavy uh, for the monsters I might come across if this was in a fantasy setting. And I actually feel that stopping power, you know, point could be very you know important if you're in a fantasy setting. Because uh, you would want to hit these monsters and have them fall down and stay down. And so in that sense, you know, a two-handed sword might also be useful. But you can't, you know, disregard the significance of defense when you're trying to fight off a bugbear. That is a dumb monster, bugbear. Who on earth made up that? An ogre. Ogres are so much cooler. All right, would I still use a sword if I had the option of other weapons? Well, honestly, probably not. I would have a sword at my side as a backup, but I wouldn't use it as my primary weapon. My primary weapon? A spear. Absolutely. Uh, we're dealing with, you know, adventuring, so we can assume this would be in a fantasy kind of world. You would be dealing with big monsters, dangerous creatures, and stuff like that, so I would want as much distance between me and them as possible. So a nice, big, long, pointy, stabby thing would be very useful. Do spears have as much stopping power as the sword I would have picked? Well, I guess it would kind of depend how beasty this spear would be and how much of a vicious kind of, you know, attack you can get in. The other big advantage that spears have, because if you're fighting monsters and creatures who are not as intelligent as, say, people, you can rightly kind of use their own momentum, momentum against them. When they charge, you know, you brace, have the spear, and so, yeah, I think a spear would be quite useful, and having a sword for backup. What about the battlefield? What about war? What sword would I pick? Well, if I was going onto a battlefield, all right, in that case, I would try and wear as much armor as I possibly could. So if I was wearing, you know, full plate armor, and I, you know, had the option of a sword to use, yeah, great sword, big two-hander, absolutely. I mean, the great, that is the battlefield sword. It's not even a sword, it's a pole arm, but, you know, if you, it's still classed in the category of swords. It's in the shape of a sword, so yeah, I would grab a great sword. Oh, yeah. Now, would I still use a great sword if I had the option of other weapons? That's an interesting question. There, there's a good chance I might. I'm a bit on the fence in regards to this, because a great sword is nowhere nearly as effective against armor as a good poleaxe, okay? And if I was going up against, you know, a lot of guys in armor, I'd probably want a poleaxe. But the thing is, a full, you know, army, depending on the period, so that's an important point to consider, but generally, you will find that most of you, the you know soldiers in the army, won't be decked out in full plate 
you know, armor. So therefore, I wouldn't need, you know, a pole axe for most of the combatants that I'll be running across. And in that sense, I think the greatsword has more advantage because you, you can handle a large group of people with just these big wide swings and especially, you know, the ways great swords are meant to be fought with, with using the momentum and swinging them around, they are very good weapons to fight multiple opponents. And on a battlefield, you can rightly assume you're going to be running into a lot of people with other pointy weapons trying to kill yourself. Kill you. Yeah. So yeah, it's a fun thing to consider. And I think about these things a lot because I'm a writer, I'm a role player, so I often just, you know, need to consider what weapons do I use and this, this and that and that. And these are my personal favourites. So I just wanted to share them with you. It's a bit of fun to talk about. Thank you for watching. And what are your favourites? Share them in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. And until next time, I'll see you later. Well, this video was very edgy, wasn't it? Wow, wow, wow.